Okay. Um, Erev Rosh Hashanah. It's going to be Rosh Hashanah Friday night. Um, I'm going to give a class on um, the Kabbalistic understanding of God and how he emanates, how God is present in the world. So there's a lot of material and I and I'm going to be um, try to be all inclusive. So I'm going to try to explain a lot of different things. And it's it might be too complicated. It might be um, I might not be able to explain it in a way that's understandable. But I hope that it is, and I hope that you get something from it. Um, I'm drawing on a lot of Kabbalistic teachings um, that I learnt from various different teachers, uh, Rabbi Moshe Weinberger, um, and various other other sources, Rabbi Yaakov Haber. Um, and then reading Adin Steinsaltz and various other people who take these concepts and bring them out into the world so we can understand them. And I think that if we get an inkling of some of these ideas, it will enhance our holiday and enhance what we get from this period, the end of Elul, the month that we're in now, Rosh Hashanah, and then the 10 days that take us from Rosh Hashanah till Yom Kippur and how to understand these days um, perhaps in a in a more mystical and a more Kabbalistic way. So I'm going to start from the very beginning, <laughs> when God created the world. How did God create the world? So God created the world. God God was everything. We understand even even though we exist and even though there's a universe, there's a concept called Ein Od Melvado. There's nothing but God. God, when we say Shema, we say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, that God is one, right? It, 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 how do we even understand what it means that God's one? It means that everything is God. There is God. God permeates and is all that is. <laughs> However, we, we exist. We think we exist. We touch ourselves. We talk. We have thoughts. We we exist and we perceive ourselves as existing separate from God. That's our perception. So in order for God to create the world, let's go back to the Genesis story. Um, there's a Kabbalistic idea called Simsum, where God retracts his presence, so to speak. He pulls back, God, God makes space for the universe to be created. And God creates the universe. And we read about the genesis of the world. We read of the six days of creation culminating in Shabbat. And uh, Rosh Hashanah is the sixth day of creation. It's the day that mankind was made, that God made mankind. Mankind was the reason why everything was created. Everything was created in order for man to exist. In order for there to be a man. Why did God create man, say our Kabbalists, say various people? Um, the man crea God created man because God had a desire to give. God had a will, a desire to bestow goodness and kindness and love and light and compassion. All of this was, 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 was directed towards man. <laughs> so Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden their soul connected intimately with the creator of their soul, of them. Um, so let's go back to the idea of Simsum. <laughs> Simsum, God withdraws in order to create. Once God created the world, then God flows back in all of his goodness, all of his light, all of his... Uh, but it's too much for us. We can't exist with the 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 energy, with the intensity with the transcendence with the everythingness of God it's too much for us to survive that intensity that whatever I don't even have the words for it and so God God in in in, in infusing this world with his presence with God's presence it comes it's filtered in it's filtered in it can't be a direct sunlight just we can't we can't go up to the sun and survive so to speak we can't, we can't be in direct contact with God. And it says in our Torah, you can't see me and live. Even Moses, who was up in the higher realms, can't see God and live. Mo um, Aaron's two sons, we learned in our Pasha class, they go into the Holy of Holies on Yom Kippur 
and it's too much they can't they want commander to go in there is too much intensity it's too much revelation it's too much for them they can't exist the revelation of sinai was too much for humanity and we all died at that time and we were brought back to life but the revelation of godliness in the world is too much for humanity to um to survive and so god filters his energy into the world his love his compassion and it comes into the world say our kabbalists through divine emanations through divine divine um, character traits, midot, um, known as the spherot, the spheros. So there are 10 spheros um, that God uses as building blocks for our world uh, by which the energies come into, our, come into the world. They come into the world through these 10 spheros. So just to, as another filtering mechanism, the world we live in is one of the f of what we understand to be four worlds. There are four worlds between us and the oneness of God. Between the no, I don't mean to say that. There's four worlds between us and the infiniteness of God. There's there's our world, the world of doing. We're in a world of doing. Let's hold on to that. This is a world where we must do things. Above us is the world of Yitzira. It's the world of um, angels. And seraphim, different, different divine heavenly beings, so to speak, that were created to, to have a function, to have a mission, to come and bring godliness into the world. But so those are the angels, right? But we're also, on some level, we're angels because we're also created to do God's will. However, we have free will. We have Bechira. We have the capacity to not do what God wants us to do, to not line ourselves up with the will of God. So let's talk about, I want to talk about the 10 spheres, the 10 emanations, the 10 filtering systems by which God infuses this world, infuses this world. The top, the top of this pattern of this structure is called Keter, is called a crown. And I'm going to show you a picture, a Kabbalistic picture of what the spheres look like. And perhaps you've seen this picture and um, and it looks like this. I don't know if people have seen a picture like this, but these are the emanations. These are the spherot. These are the building blocks by which God created the world. So God's divine energy comes into the world through these spheros. So the top one, the, the one, there are three that are that are above the world, that almost transcend the world. They're beyond our capacity to understand. It's almost like the brain, so to speak, of God. Like we can't even understand our brains. How are we going to understand the brain of God, right? So the top is Keta. It's a crown. And uh, my understanding of that is that it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a ratzon. Maybe you've heard that word ratzon, but it's the will of God. God has a desire. God had a desire to create the world. He had an idea. He had an idea to create the world. And he created the world, right? Through chokhmah, wisdom. There was a wisdom that God brought into the world. And that wisdom, if, if, you, if you know, there's a blessing that we say when we come out of the toilet and when we go to the bathroom and our, our body works and we're able to go to the toilet, there's a bracha that we make, a blessing that we make that says that Hashem made man, made us, human beings, with chokhmah, using the attribute, using the midah, using the emanation of wisdom, God created mankind with chokhmah, right? So... So that's the next emanation that comes from. So at the top we have Keta, which is the which is the idea, which is the ratzon, which is the 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 the, the core of of an, of where something comes from. The top, the top, the top, the top, <laughs> like the brain. Like well, I had an idea. Well, what do you do with an idea? You have to you have to you have to you have to translate it into something, right? So chokhmah is the wisdom, and bina is where you take that wisdom and you and you create something from that wisdom. So in this upper three nidos, these upper three spheros that are so, so literally above the dimension of this world are Keta, Chochma and Bina. And um, and uh, there there is in many other patterns included another one called Da'as, which is knowledge, which is a certain kind of knowledge. And if you take Chochma, Bina and Da'as, you have Chabad which is where Chabad, you know, the Bavitcher movement, they took these, these, these higher dimensions of God, of wisdom and understanding and knowledge, and they 
call their movement the Chabad movement. The Chabad houses is Chachma Bina Das. It's an acronym for Chachma Bina Das. That's the, that's the divine wisdom that comes down into the world, right? So that's our head. That's the brain, so to speak, of godliness. And it's going to infuse into the world. It's going to be, it's going to be filtered down through four different worlds. So it gets to our world, which is the lowest world, but it's the world of doing, the world that we're in. And then there are seven, so to speak, lower spheros by which God puts his energy into the world. And those are chesed. Start with chesed. Start with chesed. Chesed is kindness. And it's um, a link to the right, the right side of the body, the right arm. Chesed. What's chesed? Chesed is, is kindness. It's love. It's love. So God created the world with love. That's the beginning of the world is love. And you can imagine if you just infuse something with love, 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 like you love somebody, you smother them. You can't, you can't just keep giving love. It's too much. Like it's, it's overwhelming. So another mida, another attribute, another building block of the world is gavura, which is opposite chokma. I hope, I hope you guys are understanding this. It's a little complicated, but so there's kindness, there's love, there's giving, there's a desire to, to, to give and give an abundance and, and baracha and just, 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 overflow 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 but there has to be a gavura there has to be a a, a, a boundary there has to be a, a discipline there has to be a stop to that like you we can't take it it's too much like if you smudge just smother someone with your love like at some point they go whoa you know back off it's too much i can't take it back up din that's that's gavura that's a that's a limitation of the kindness right we need that we need that balance of giving and stopping right and then the harmony, the synthesis, synthesis of the two is called Tiferet. That's the, that's the third of the lower seven spheros is Tiferet, is a harmony that comes from the balance of giving and limitation and boundaries. We get Tiferet, which is harmony, which is beauty, which is balance. Like imagine somebody comes into a room and starts talking. And then somebody else comes into the room and starts talking. And somebody else comes into the room and starts talking. And you have a lot of people talking. It's a noise. It's a balagan. It's too much, right? But if somebody came into the room and starts singing, and then another person comes in and joins in, another person comes in and joins in, we have a harmony. You have something beautiful. You have something transcendent. That's to ferret. That's this attribute in the world of bringing two disparate things together and creating something beautiful and something harmonic and something that balances and something that's lovely. So in our tradition... We look back at our forefathers and we and we understand that they, each one of them, excelled in a certain one of these spheres and a certain one of these building blocks, a certain one of these um, emanations of one of these um, character traits. So Abraham is known for his kindness. We understand that he sat in his tent and opened up four sides and everybody was welcome to come. He just loved people. He just ran to people. He just wanted to give to people. He was just all effusive. He perfected the Mida of Chesed. Isaac was the one who was able to understand and, and, and um, personify Gavura, this limitation, this this ability to to be restrained and have boundaries and Yaakov Jacob was the one who took the took the two and brought that symphony brought that harmony brought that balance into the world so that's what he's known for so what I want to add here maybe I should have added it earlier is that we have a very 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 pervasive belief in Judaism that we mankind are created we are created in the image of God. So what does that mean? A lot of people answer that. It means we have free will. It means that whatever it means. But in, the, in this pattern, in the Kabbalistic understanding of what it means that we are created in the image of God, it means that our soul, our soul, what's our soul? Our soul is the breath of God. Our soul is, excuse me, our soul is the cord by which we are constantly connected to God. We are a, we have a breath of God inside of us. It's known as the soul. It's a constant breath. It doesn't like God didn't blow into us and go away. God is constantly breathing every second, every moment, recreating us all the time, recreating the whole world all the time. Every moment there's an infusion of godliness into the world and our soul is constantly being breathed into us. There's a constant breath of God being blown into us. So we are constantly connected to God by our soul. Our soul 
is B'Tselem Elohim. Our soul is in the image of God, meaning if God has 10 spheros, 10 ways in which his magnificence, light, omnipresence, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, is manifested in the world. And that's what we see. That's how we understand the world was created with these 10 spheros. We too have a soul that has 10 capacities to emanate into the world. We mirror God. Our soul has the same 10 spheros that God, so to speak, has, is. So God has a ruts on. God has a ruts on to create the world. We have a ruts on. What's our ruts on? What do we want? And what do we want? And that is the work of Rosh Hashanah. The work of Rosh Hashanah, I think, one of the works of Rosh Hashanah, is to dig deep inside and say, what do I want? And why do I want it? <laughs> why do I want it? I want, what do I want? Right, so I was talking, I was talking to, um, I was talking to a friend and I, and I hope it's okay with her. I didn't ask her, but I hope, I, I'm pretty sure she'll be okay that I'm sharing this, this analogy. Um, but um, Ratzon means your will, your desire, what you want. What you want is your Ratzon. So God wanted to create the world. What do we want? So maybe I want, maybe I want um, a big house. Maybe I want a big house. Why? Why do I want a big house? I want a big house because I want to have a lot of people over. Well, why do I want to have a lot of people over? Not in COVID. <laughs> No, it's a, I, want, I want to be able to, whatever, I want to be able to have a lot of people over. Why do I want to have a lot of people over? Because um, I enjoy having people. Why do you enjoy people? Like, keep going to the whys. Keep backing up your why questions. Keep going all the way back, all the way back. And you'll get to the nugget of what your ruts on is, which according to the Kabbalistic system is your starting point. It's your roots. Your root is what you want. And then, hopefully, we live our lives manifesting and trying to acquire that which we want, right? So if I want something, I'm going to work hard to try to achieve that which I want. And so what Rosh Hashanah and this period is helping us to do is to identify what it is that we want so that it, let's say, let's say I get to the basic, the basis of my desires. I want to be connected. I don't want to be alone. I want to I want to feel transcendent. I want to have, I want to be loved and have loved. I, whatever it is that you get down to the root of what you want and what you, what you desire, what you desire, then that's what you're going to hopefully in identifying it, then be able to live according to it. Right. So I'll, t I'll give an example. So today I, um, I, so yesterday I was very, um, I, I guess I was a little gruff, rough with, uh, somebody that, that I work with. And, um, and I was aware that I did it and I did it and I was very upset with myself that I was rough with this person, a younger person. And I should have known better, but I was rough with her and I understood why I was because I was annoyed, whatever. But I, I, I did this exercise. Well, why, why did I say that? And, 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 and I went back and I said, well, what do I want? I want a relationship with this person. I don't want to be in, in discord. I don't want this person to be somebody I'm annoyed at or she's annoyed at me. I want peace. I want, I want there to be a connection that's loving. I, 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 want, I want that. So I mustered up the courage to go and apologize to her. Um, and, um, but, but I wanted, I realized that what I wanted was that connection, a nice, peace, peaceful, harmonious connection. I wanted it more than I wanted to be right or I wanted to be stuck in my position or whatever. But I think that in the exercise, it's just an example, but in the exercise of going back and saying, well, what do I want? And why do I want it? Why do I want that? Why do I want that? Why do I want that? We'll get back to the core of who we are. And each one of us has a different soul. So each one of us might answer that question differently, what I want and where my roots are going to be planted, right? So, so let's start at the Ratzon. And that's what we do in Rosh Hashanah. So we have this beautiful book. It's called The First 10 Days. It's by Rabbi Haber. And what he does is he takes the 10 spheros, the 10 emanations of God in the world, the 10 building blocks of way in which God manifests himself in the world, right? He takes those and he says, okay, we have them too because we're a soul and we're a breath of God and we're B'Tselem Elohim. So we have, we have the, same, the same pattern going on inside of us. So on Rosh Hashanah, we're going to line up the 10 spheros with the 10 days that connect between 
Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, there's 10 days there. What's my work for those 10 days? And says, Rabbi Haber, your work is to work on each one of these midot, each one of these spherot, and identify it and think about it in your own life. And then, if we could do this, what we're going to do, hopefully, at the end of our 10-day period, is we're going to be able to allow more light to shine into the world. Right. So what he says about Rosh Hashanah is he says, he says, Rosh Hashanah is this day where we have to understand what it is that we want. And after you answer, uh, after you answer, ask yourself why over and over. And then get this. This is really I don't know if anybody's going to do this. And if they do, let me know. Try to synopsize your deepest desire into a sentence. So take that that what do I want and why all the way back to its root and write that down. And that sentence is your cornerstone of Rosh Hashanah. Because that's the beginning, right? We're starting all over again. We're a soul in a body that's being born on Rosh Hashanah. Just like Adam and Eve were created on Rosh Hashanah. Just like every single baby is born new. New. And what the Kabbalists teach us is that the baby isn't born... Um, it, it's, let's do it the other end. A baby is born with, first of all, hardwired with the spheros. With, the, with this soul that we have, this soul that has all these uh, capacities to emanate into the world, just like God has is emanating into the world through these 10 channels, these 10 filters. We have the same 10 filters that we can channel ourselves out of the world, same, same. Also, we understand, and perhaps you know this, but there's a medrash, the teaching that tells us that the baby in utero has an angel, a, a divine messenger that sits and teaches that baby, teaches that soul, all the wisdom of the world, all of the Torah is, is taught to that soul. And when we're born, there's, you know, the clap on the lip thing and the, so, and the knowledge goes inside. The knowledge goes in. We have it. We have to reveal it. We have, we're not a blank slate. We're not nothing. We have wisdom inside us. We have to un unfold that, unravel that. And so if we think of our soul as being the divine breath, if we think of our soul having the same 10 spheros that Hashem, Kaviyahol, so to speak, has, and if we think of ourselves as constantly being connected to God, then our job in this world is to use every single one of our divinely given med uh, character traits, our, our, our spheros, our, our capacities to function in the world and use them correctly. So let's use this first one we talked about, chesed, desire to give, the desire to love, right? So when you love, say the Kabbalists, when you love, and probably every single person that's going to listen to this loves somebody, or something <laughs> that I hope that love your capacity to love is coming from God God is giving you the capacity to love so you have we have a soul which we can't define we have a God that we can't define but we understand that God has an attribute of chesed, of kindness, of love, of giving, that he wants to give into the world, so do we. When we take our capacity to love and we love the right things, when we love the right people, <laughs> you know, not the wrong people <laughs> or the wrong things, but when we love the right things, right? So if you're married or you're with somebody special and you love that person and not you know, somebody else's husband, right? That's the wrong place to put your love, right? It would be with the person you're with. Love that person. Love your children. Love your parents. Love, love, love learning Torah. Love doing good deeds. Love visiting somebody in the hospital. Love having guests. Whatever. Whatever it is that you love, that emotion, that feeling of love, is coming from God and when we use it properly when we direct our love because we have free will to do that we can choose to love correctly so to speak and we get where do we get the chokhmah from where do we get the knowledge to know what's right and wrong Torah God so then we're lined up then we're closing the circuit then we're bringing godliness into the world we are conduits we're like the angels we are doing our job we're bringing godliness into the world in the correct way and we are 
again, completing the world that God created. God created the world in order to bring love into the world. So when we bring love into the world, we're helping God complete the task of why he created the world, to bestow goodness into the world. And we get, we get to do that. So we have to have the intention to do it. We can't just, we can, <laughs> but it's a high level to say, okay, so let's say I have $10 and I want to give, I have an idea. I have a ruts on that. I want to give this money to charity, right? There's my highest keter. I have this desire. I have an idea. I have an idea. Boom. I have an idea. I want to give charity. I want to give tzedakah. I have a $10 bill. I want to give it away, right? That's a, so now chokhmah, now my wisdom, like how am I going to, wh wh who am I going to give it to? Like, where does it go? Like, who am I going to give it to? That's chokhmah, like there's a lot of different places that are coming at me and I'm, 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 on, I'm on the internet and somebody's telling me that I should give it to this person and somebody's telling me I should give it to this person and I have to like, it's too much, it's too many places to give it, then I have to like narrow it down, right? I have to give it to, like I have to give it to somebody, right? And I, and I narrow it down and then the act of chesed is to, is to give, is to give and when I give, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it down into this world of doing, right? I said this world, this is the bottom world, it's the world of doing. And I'm going to do by giving, right? So I can have an idea that I'm going to give my $10 away, but unless I actually do it, I haven't completed the, the, whole, the whole scenario. So I can, have an, I can have a desire to do all sorts of things, but unless I actually do it, then it hasn't come to completion. So the, what they're actually giving it does is it completes it. It makes it that I'm doing God's will. I'm completing the circuit. I'm opening up the channels for there to be more love in the world. I'm bringing love into the world. I'm doing that. And, and it's the same thing with smiling at someone. Like we don't have to do like big, great big things. I don't have to do great big things. I can do little things. I can I can smile at someone. We had this in our 40 day um, journey of, of a thing that's really good to do is to smile at someone. If I smile at someone, because I, I love them, because I like it, because I, I want them to feel good, because I want to give to them. I'm giving them a smile. I might not have money to give. I might not have anything to give, but I can give people a bracha. I can give them, I can give them a blessing. I can give them, you know, other things instead of, uh, a thing, right? I can give them my smile, a bit harder with masks and COVID, but the idea is maybe in the eyes you can see, but, but that, that desire to give and that capacity to give comes from God's emanation, God, the sphere of God in the world called chesed, right? And the same thing with, with every single one of the midot. So we have all the spherot, we have gavura, we have the, like a balance, right? We have, I can't just give, 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 give. I have to, I have to stop. At some point it's enough, like stop. Like I don't want, like, like my children say, mommy, enough. I don't want any more. It's like, don't give me any more. <laughs> okay, fine. You know, there's a limit. There's a limit. And that, that limit when I stop or I have self-compassion and I say, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, but I'm, I'm a schlatter. I'm giving myself away. I can't do this. It's too much for me to keep giving. So I have to stop. I have to stop. And that attribute, that Mida, that sphera of Gavura is being manifested in the world when I stop because it's too much. I'm giving myself away. I'm, 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 it's not, you know, it's dying or enough. Like I can't, don't do any more. Like stop inviting people or stop giving to people or like, cause it's too much. And when you look at the creation of the world, when God created the world, right? There are limits. There are boundaries, right? There's, there's water and then God separated the water. So there's land, but there has to be a limitation. There has to be, um, boundaries in the world for it to function properly. So the attribute, the mida, the sphera, the character trait of gavura, of limitation, of boundary, of severity, of, 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 of discipline has to be part of the makeup of the world. And then we go down through all of the seven lower spherot and they all are things, ways in which God builds the world. He builds the world with Netzach. Netzach is the next one down. So we had Chesed, Gevura, Tiferet as, as personified in the world by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then we go down and we have Netzach. And Netzach is victory. It's, it's, it's um, uh, persistence. It's eternality. It's Moses. Moses, the, who's going to bring the Torah down into the world and, and give, give this sense of eternity into the world. What we're doing is somehow or other, however this is possible, what the Kabbalistic system is teaching us is that on some level, the infinite nature of God is somehow manifest in the, fin, the finite world that we live in. I'm just giving you a skim version of this. There's like so much. But that, that the, the, the infinite, we're taking the infinite and we're bringing it somehow we're bringing it in 
to the finite, into the into the limited environment world that we live in. OK, so what we do is we actualize those spheros. We're bringing those spheros into reality, into action, into happening. And we get to be partners of that. We get to do it. So we're on a higher level than the angels, say the Kabbalists, because Kabbalists don't have a choice. Kabbal excuse me, angels don't have a choice. They only have the will of God. They don't have a like, a, oh, maybe I shouldn't do it. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. You know, they're not they're not, you know, trying to decide what to do. They only do the will of God. They only have a mission to do They're By the way, they're not little um, babies with wings flying around. They're messengers of God into the world that have a mission to do. So they're sort of like the servants that the, the, they come into the world to achieve something. We saw in the Torah where Abraham, after he circumcised himself, he's sitting and he's welcoming the guests. And there are three guests that come. There are three angels that come. Um, we understand when Joseph, when he, when Joseph goes out to find his brothers before they throw him in the pit, etc. What's Joseph doing? He can't find them. He's lost and he meets a man and the man directs him to his brothers. That's an angel. There was an angel that directed him. So we see angels. Apparently there are 762 angels listed in the Torah. It's a lot of angels. But we also understand that there's an angel teaching every baby Torah. There's an angel next to every blade of grass telling it to grow, whatever that means. So this energy, like this is the emanations of God somehow come through the, the, the angels into this world, into our world of doing. Okay, that's a lot. Okay, Netzach. Netzach is Moses. He personified this Nida of Netzach. So, so um, if I keep going with this work of every day, so as I said on the first day, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah lines up with Keter, with desire, with Ratzon. What do I want? What is it that I deeply, deeply, deeply desire? Like my, my most core root desire. What is that? That's, that's really, really big, right? So then we get Chochmah, which is our wisdom. And where do I get our wisdom from? Where do we get our wisdom from? Do we get our wisdom from the internet? Do we get our wisdom from you know, a TV show? Do we get our wisdom from, um, yes, we get our wisdom from lots of places, but we have to be able to kind of discern what's good wisdom and what's bad wisdom, right? We, if our brain, so to speak, if, if we um, are like a, um, a computer, right? We want the right information in our computer. We don't want a, 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 like a, a virus to come in and mess everything up, excuse the, excuse the analogy in our COVID days. But we don't want a virus to come in. That's the wrong information coming in and messing everything up. We want the right information. We want pure information. We want pure wisdom. We want chokma, the chokma. We want to know what that is. So day two, the second day of Rosh Hashanah, is a day to focus on chokma. We want to think about what our strengths and our weaknesses are. We want to think about what we know. You know, what we know and why we know that and where the source of that knowledge is. And is it knowledge that I want? Is it what I want to live my life by, you know, monitor our wisdom, think about our wisdom second day, because we're lining it up. Because what happened when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil is that they started to block the window of divine emanation into the world. So, so God was unable to flow all the chesed that he wanted into the world. All the kindness was blocked by what Adam and Eve did. And what we're trying to do every single day of these 10 days is wipe the window clean so the light can come in. We're going to wipe our Mida, our Sphera, our connection in each of these different realms clean so there can be more divine influence into the world. It sounds like a lot and it is a lot, but we can do it with very simple actions, right? So maybe the first three, they are, they're not so action oriented. They're in our minds, they're in our brains, like what do I want and where's my wisdom come from and how do I how do I bring that wisdom down into the world and, and, and make it like the Bina. What is Bina? It's about visualizing who we want to be. It's about taking the wisdom and like, and then like, and like bringing it out into a vision of what I want to be. What do I want to be? Like, what are my gifts? What am I focusing on? How do I, how do I, how do I prepare myself now for the doing? So now we get into the Mida, which is the third, excuse me, the fourth day of our 10 days from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. The fourth day is the day where we think about Chesed and who we give to and why, and why we give to people and who we give to. And then maybe even then to say, God give, God gives unconditionally. God gives sometimes, uh, often, without us even knowing. Like we don't even always like say, oh, that's from God. You know, we just kind of go about our lives. And God continues to give. 
Go back even to the sin of the golden calf when when the people worshipped the golden calf and they and they did such a terrible sin. It was awful. They really, really missed the mark on that one. What does God do? He doesn't withdraw his presence. He continues to give them life. He continues to give them food and manna and water and, and, and so on and so on. He continues to sustain them. He continues to bestow goodness on them even when they don't behave in a way that's the way that it's lined up to be like if they started worshiping another god you know god's continually unconditionally unconditionally so maybe the work of the fourth day is to do something anonymously do a kindness without a recipient knowing without without it being something that everybody has to know about that it's unconditional to um to to give um to give to a new charity that you never gave gave to before to volunteer for something um for a cause that you that you that you never um, that you never did before, um, and then the, the, the another idea of that fourth day is to locate and appreciate a random kindness that God built into the world and is available to everyone and anyone, like air and water and a sunset that we can all enjoy. You know that built in, built in giving, giving, giving the joy of a of a of a first cup of coffee in the morning or an orange or a beautiful piece of fruit or whatever it is you know that that this is god doing putting kindness into the world right unconditional kind of just giving i'm just giving from that place of love and i love you and and really if we really internalize that it's completely overwhelming to feel that we are unconditionally loved by god that god is un is is constantly creating us every moment that God is connected to us and gives us opportunities to manifest ourselves in that chain of godly, um, godly manifestation into the world. We get to be linked to God through how we act, not just how we think and not just what, 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 what goes on in our brains, but what we do, what we say, you know, how we use our bodies. It's, it's a phenomenal thing to think about at this time. So as we go down through the spheres, we get to Netzach and, 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 you know, it's a lot to talk about each one. And the very, the very um, bottom, so to speak, of this whole pattern is um, the sphere called Malchut, called Malchus, kingship, right? And I think we all know that Rosh Hashanah is the day where we proclaim God king, right? Well, God's not a king like the king of England, um, he's not sitting on his throne like the King of England and walking around Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle, right? So let's take this paradigm and say, what's Malchus? Malchus, according to the Kabbalists and this frame of spheres, Malchus is all the spheres that, that are above it, all those nine spheres that are above it, coming down through Malchus. It's a receptivity of Malchus. It's taking all of this energy, all of this light, all of this goodness, all of this potential into Malchus where this is Malchus is where heaven touches earth. That's where heaven touches earth. And it's the culmination of it all. It's a receptacle for all of this energy. It takes it all in, brings it all down, receives it, all this infinitude. And, and that's what we want to access. We want to access that Malchus. And then when we say God is king, what we're saying is, there's nothing but God, and God is king, meaning that the way in which God infuses this whole world with divine, with, with divineness is through the Midos that comes down into our world through Malchus, through kingship. It's a word, right? But we get stuck on an image, but it's a word. Let's just remove the word and say, on Rosh Hashanah, we are recognizing and understanding and coming to a greater ex understanding, acceptance, intention, thought of God being one, God being everything, God being beyond and infused in, and that we're connected and that it's all part of the godliness that is, that is the Ein Sof, the infinite manifest coming down filtered down through the four worlds through the nine spheres into malchut into this this final vessel that we're recognizing holds all all that is as it comes out into our world and when we when we understand that we that we're linked 
that we're connected, that we're part of the pattern, we're part of the work that needs to be done. That when Adam and Eve messed up in the Garden of Eden and they closed the shutters on some of that light, what we're doing is trying to open the shutters, open the shutters. Each one of us has a different soul. Each one of us has a different energies. Each one of us has different work to do. But, but bit by bit by bit by bit, we're going to wipe the windows clean. We're going to smile at someone, hopefully. We're going to be kind to people. We're going to limit how harsh we are. We're going to use boundaries in the right way. We're going to use our eternity and our, our desire and our perseverance and our determination in the right ways. We're not going to plow over people. We're going to be grateful. We're going to be be humble. I'm going to build relationships. Like all of these things that are the work of this world, that is the work of this world. But it's not, it's not, disconnected from the big picture. It's part of the big picture. We operate within a world that has time and space, <laughs> but God doesn't. God's beyond that. God's God's all and everything and everywhere beyond time. And we're limited by time and we're limited by what we can see and what we can understand. And and what? And we're partners in that. We're like Malachim. We can create ourselves to be like Malachim. So when we look at these, at these, at these, um, at these four, these forefathers who personified these these character traits, we have a bar. We can like look at their lives and say, well, how did they do it? You know, how did Abraham manifest his kindness into the world? How did Jacob manifest this this harmony and this beauty? How did Moses? bring perseverance and and um, and uh, determination and eternality into his world? How did Aaron, the brother of Moses, bring humility and gratitude and, and bringing people together and the beauty? How did he bring that into the world and keep going down? And what's really interesting, if you're interested, I'm interested, is when we get to Sukkot, which is on the other side of Yom Kippur, a few days later, we have a Sukkot, a holiday called Sukkot, and we build, we build our little huts in the garden or the, wherever, outside, and we invite guests and there's a there's a Kabbalistic understanding that every day of Sukkot we invite a different guest and there are seven guests and there are seven days of Sukkot, right? And there's seven lower spheros. So we're inviting each day, we're inviting a different sphera into the Sukkah. We invite Abraham on the first day, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Aaron, Joseph, and then finally Malchus, King David. So like there's a lot of overlap. There's so much going on here that it's mind blowing to think about it. Like I'm trying to simplify it to kind of bring it down into like bite sized nuggets. But if you think about it, we have the seven days of creation. We have the seven lower spheros. We have the seven guests of the sukkah. Right. And then we have 10. We have all together. We have 10 spheros. We have 10 utterances, um, speeches that God spoke to bring the world into existence. He spoke the world into existence. Ten utterances by which God created the world. Ten plagues in the Egypt. Ten commandments. Ten spheros. So they all line up. And I, 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 I'm really not going to go anywhere near that. But it, it, they line up. This, this is this is it. This is this is how things interconnect. And so. And so it feels simplistic to say God's king and he's in the field. But if you think about the way in which God is filtering his presence into the world through these Medos, through these spheros, right? So that we can have some interaction with God because in the infiniteness of God, there's no way we could have any interaction with that. It has to be filtered. We can't, we can't get any, we can't get close to the sun. We can't get close to God. It's too much for our capacity to survive too much for us to satisfy um to, for us to survive so what we have to do what god had to do to create us was simpson was mitzamsem himself withdraw himself so that he could create the world and then infuse the world with all of these attributes with all of these building blocks with kindness and with boundaries and with harmony and with eternity and with with gratitude and with and with foundation and con connectivity and 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 selflessness and loyalty and all of these these feelings and emotions and all of that come into the world that's god coming into the world and what we do is we get to choose how to channel it because we have the same 
capacities, the capacity to give, the capacity to set a boundary, the capacity to um, be grateful, the capacity to set up relationships. We have the same cojos, the same strengths, the same energies, but we are also in this world, which is very confusing, and we have to try to figure out how do I live? How do I do this right? How do I do the, how do I love properly? How do I have boundaries properly? How do I do it so that I actually am a conduit for those attributes into the world? And then I become angelic. Like sometimes, I don't know if you've ever had a situation probably where somebody does a kindness for you and you just think it came at just the right time. It came at the right time. It was the right, somebody was describing to me today a kindness that was done for her. And she said, it, it, was, it was like, I just needed, I needed that. And, and, and I wanted to reframe it and, and say to her, you needed it and God knew you needed it. And God on some level gave these ladies the opportunity to give to you at a time that you needed it. It was set up, Hashkocha Pratis, divine, divine providence, whatever. But it was set up. And if those ladies didn't rise to the occasion, if they said, oh, I don't want to give to that person, I'm too busy, somebody else would have done it, right? Because that kindness had to come to that person. That person had to get those meals in the hospital when she was in the hospital. She had to get those meals. And these two ladies, the ones that gave it to her, were the ones that rose to the occasion. They used their free will to choose correctly and to have an idea to bring food to this lady, to then cook the food, world of action, bring, no, go to the supermarket, buy the food, you know, cook the food, package the food, travel to the hospital to give it to the lady, right? A lot of steps of doing, 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 bringing all this kindness. And they, they, they did it. They closed the circle. They, you know, brought that energy, got God's energy of giving, and they were like angels. I've had the same thing when somebody did something for us when we were in the hospital or the, when, our, when, our, when something happened, whatever. People, and I said, you're such a mach, you do such an angel. It was such an angelic thing you did. And they say, ah, oh, it's nothing, it's nothing. But maybe at this time, we actually maybe should focus a little bit on, yeah, like what I did was really good. And we can spend a lot of time focusing on all the things we do bad. We're very good at doing that. But maybe also we can say, oh, when I smiled at that person, when I went and said sorry to that person, I'm sort of feeling like good about that. I want to feel good about that because it'll help me next time, right? Instead of saying, oh, you know, all the other people I didn't say sorry to, and I, but I said it to this person, but it wasn't enough because I didn't say it to the other people. I'm not going to really be able to build on that. I want to build on where I did something right, right? So I did this right, so now I'm going to build on that. Or I see from this person how meaningful it is to get food in the hospital. So maybe next time when I see somebody in the hospital, I'm going to um, have an idea to give food to that person. And that's probably one of the amazing things of the internet is that we see what people are doing all around. I say, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't think about that, but now I see that I can do that too. And the ideas are seeded in, right? We get these ideas, they get seeded in. They don't come from nowhere. They come from God. We're linked to God. Our ideas come from God, some of them, <laughs> some of them, like th that the ruts on, the ruts on who you are at your core, who you are at your core is really important work to do because then if we know why we do what we do and we understand why we do it, then we can try to line ourselves up. And yes, we're going to have branches that are going to go off in the wrong direction and we'll have twigs that need to get pruned. And we do a lot of pruning at this time of year, like metaphorical pruning of our actions, right? Oh, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have done that. But you know, on some level, it's not going to be effective to just prune the branches. We might have to move our root. We might have to make sure our, our branches grow in the right direction. And we get 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur to, to focus. All right? I might not be able to do it for the rest of the year, but for this 10 days, can I be, do, become what I, a little bit more of what I, what I want to be? What do I want to be? And then how do I, baby steps, work on each day to be more of that? Be more of that. And I might not continue, but right now, that's, that's what I'm focusing. That's what I'm thinking. And that's what I have a vision for. And that's the foundation that I'm setting down for the rest of the year. And there's an incredible power to the beginnings. It says in the, in, in the Zohar, apparently, that everything goes after the beginning. It, it, the beginning is crucial to the rest of the year. So if we start off right, we, we, we're on good foundation. We've got a, you know, we're in a good place. So, um, so what's, what's, um, so let's see if there's anything else. I mean, that's a lot of information I just gave over. 
um, but I think that the end result is that we have a we have a job to do and it might be overwhelming and it might not be it might be empowering and it might be um, really kind of um, what's the word um, empowering to understand that God cares about us that God loves us that, that we matter and that God on Rosh Hashanah and these 10 days is saying the same words that he said to Adam when Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden no before they were expelled God says to Adam and Eve Ayaka where are you where are you where are you and that's what we are saying to ourselves where are we where are we what who are we where are we where are we in relation to God where do we want to be what do we want what's our vision what are we thinking about how do I how do I clean up how do I work towards making all my feelings and emotions and it's it's a beyond it's too much too much it's way too much but little 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 step 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 you know to to uh, to think deeply about each one of the spirit on our in our 10 day journey maybe every day maybe every day I'll post something on the weekly chat of the day's intention what to think about that day we'll start with Rosh Hashanah so Rosh Hashanah is the the first three days are the three highest brain like spheros there Keta there's your rats on your will your ideas what you want what you want what you want your wisdom where's your wisdom coming from is it the right wisdom and then like your understanding of that wisdom and how you want to vision that into the future so that's the first three days and then maybe every day I'll just post a little a little like work to do on this day it'll be good and we can think about it and you know like a do it do a different kindness or do a different this or do a different that and think about that and um, and please God you know um, a teacher, I uh, have a teacher, Esther Ween, she, she has a marshal, a uh, parable of how to see ourselves, how to see ourselves in the bigger picture of the world and the bigger picture of there's nothing but God. And her analogy, which I've used before, is the baby in the womb, that, that we, all of creation is like a baby in the womb of God, like the makom, the place of the world is God. And we are inside that, right? So God doesn't need us, but we need God. We can't survive without God. We need that umbilical cord to connect us to the source of life. We need that cord that's going to connect us so that we're continually getting that infusion of electricity, of soul, of food, of everything, of, of spirituality. It's all coming to us. It's all coming in. And, um, and we're linked so we have the same imprint with those spheres by which God built the world and emanates into the world. We have those two and we can think about them and think about how to, to bring ourselves back, to bring more light, to bring more goodness into the world through these divine emanations that exist within us and within our soul. So um, my blessing for us is that we um, think deeply and that we're able to really see ourselves born anew and really start this year with a with a fresh beginning and um, with right intentions and um, and with uh, and with the capacity to reach out to each other to help us together grow and together um, make the world brighter and more illuminated with the love and the goodness of God.